good one. We've seen we've seen you know this one before, uh, so I can't wait to see kind of where we go with early game. Exactly. As we jump on over into draft select, taking a look at what we got going on, we got the early Yumi ban. This is definitely a target at UBU. Who uh, anyone hanging out in the Discord network? Thank you so much for that lurk. Uh, Anyone hanging out the Discord did see that UB called out today to have a <laughs> to have a pentakill on the Yumi. So uh, maybe just some caution coming in from the side of Uncle and the nephews, making sure nothing happens and the Lucian taken away from Benjamin Zipper right away. Now I'm angry. Siobhan, Sorry, I'm getting the. Uh, oh I'm getting yeah, the, uh... yeah, you're all good. Uh, Shivana and Alistair will be the next two bands with Viego coming through. Definitely a band being targeted are Ben Arvell here. This is uh, a champion that he likes to play quite a bit. Uh, something I'm really liking out of the uncle and the nephews is it looks like they've, they've done their homework. It looks like they, they're going after these comfort picks. Not so much meta. Just take away what we know that you can play, what we know that works. And Lulu will be the last band. So interesting to see Bug Pudding will have to play another champion. But that does mean the Udyr is left up. And GDI absolutely smurfed on this champion yesterday. Yeah, that's another one, right? We were talking about those jungle meta stuff. I mean, he's just been uh, season 11. Hard, hard carry in the jungle for, for the entirety. Yeah, he's been an absolute force. As the Nar will be the answer here. Uh, pretty good response. Uh, just something that you can grab blind should do well into most things uh, Aurelia is still being up here things like the Jace are still here So this NAR can be countered, but they might be challenging bug pudding to reach into the champion pool and see What what she's able to play into that as the Jin will be the next pick another tip on dino nuggies actually playing with a sub yesterday in the marksman role now with team captain space Jabberwocky back in uh, for the Dino Nuggies, really excited to see how they perform today and specifically how he performs today as the Karma Oriana will be the next lockup. They have drafted a really strong uh, mid to top side jungle duo, trio, excuse me. For sure, the Karma is just really annoying in lane, you know. Uh, the Enchant just up there with the speed, with the shielding, with the binds. I mean, what's Sonar going to do early game? We'll see how that plays out. Yeah, and this definitely to me looks like it will be the karma top lane just keeping bug pudding on these supports that could play top definitely a strategy now that we will see two games in a row i wonder if teams will look to ban this out in the future as the galio will be the next ban uh could be looking to just try to take out some of the engaged tools in the bot lane take away some of this safety if this swain is a support swain and not a solo lane uh just something to let him actually get in and do be able to do what he wants to do as a champion as the diana will be taken away from mocha mexican tristana next to fall always a good ban yeah, Tristana just taking away a power pick here, but things like the Kai'Sa, the Misfortune, even the Senna, all still up here. Uh, Senna, I feel like, would be really drastic for the side of Uncle and the Nephews. Just something that uh, really enables the Udyr to run in and just have that safety. It turns your already strong top three champions to even stronger as a three-man dive can turn into a uh, three-man dive with shields coming from the ulti of that Senna in the bot lane. <laughs> oh, man. Got... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're good. Oh, I was just saying. <laughs> we got some mad betting going on. People trying to win those points back as the cane will be locked in for Mocha Mexican. Another jungle pick that really looks to pop off just like that Diana did yesterday. We'll see, man. He's feast or famine as the cane usually, so. 
interesting enough it will seem like gdi is not the only one running back on the champion that they had played yesterday yes or er, today we are going to have the sivir again in the bot lane something that's really stable really good into the swain because you'll be able to spell shield the e you don't have to worry about a lot of his engage and i think that this is something that they just they might just like to go to and the rounding out their draft will be the recon uh they they will have some pretty insane burst here with the oriana with the udir just and with the recon two great delivery systems for your two great delivery systems for your shockwave and then you also have sivir ulti and then karma mantra e to shielded speed up allies uh this is actually a really good engage and disengage comp coming out of the side of uncle and the nephews yeah, so what I'm seeing here, too, that's a little bit unorthodox is it looks like somebody's playing Kin and Mid. Maybe that's a new thing I just don't even know about. Uh, I've never seen the Oriana Kin and matchup. Uh, and then the other thing for Uncle and Nephews is they're really working off of a somewhat paper-thin front line with an Udir and a Karma. So I feel like if they get behind it all, that's going to be um, challenging to play around as they try to find engages uh, over objectives. And that's a really good point because this wallet is, uh, as I was saying, a good comp that they would be able to run into the enemy team, but also disengage from the enemy team. Uh, without, a, if, if the gold's even, I would still favor the side of Uncle and the Nephews just in a, a prolonged fight. But if the gold is in any way in Dino Nuggies' favors, then they will just run over these team fights. Uh, just make them use these ultimates, make them use these uh, big tools as just uh, disengage and be running back for a lot of these fights. And that's definitely something that can come back to bite them while on the side of Dino Nuggies to really hit more. This is another comp similar to what we saw yesterday. You have things like the Nar. When the Nar wants to Mega or the Kennen sees a chance to go in for a flank with the ultimates as, as well as the Swain, with Jin in the back line just absolutely laying down a curtain call or just working front to back. And I want to say this will be a red cane, but I can see the argument for blue. I think they have a lot of tools to move in and dominate a team fight. So really interesting what we'll have here once these 5v5s pan out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a massive front line if you think about it, right? If Swain gets any amount of gold, gets an early stopwatch, an early uh, Sonya, it's like, what do you do bro like that's a lot of stuns a lot of aoe stuns a lot of aoe damage coming from the swain the kin and the gnar and then like you said the gin in the back line can just shell away so we'll see i mean i think uh uncle and nephews are gonna have to look for pigs gonna have to play pretty smart uh one three one or four one even just try to hold that line because in a 5v5 situation i just don't see it yeah anytime they're at a dragon fight especially if this team has to face check they do have the Udir. Yeah, he'll be able to be sped up by the Karma, but this Udir, while he will get tanky, isn't invincible. If he steps out too far, they will be able to burst him down. And yeah, you could punt it or threaten an Oriana Shockwave, but there are worlds where that whiffs. There will be fights where that will be down. And that Udir can just be blown up and the rest of the team will just be forced to disengage. For sure. <laughs> But the real question is, does pineapple go on pizza? WW2 Penguin, fuck no. <laughs> Not uh, ever. And me, you know, my one of my favorite pizzas right now is still the <laughs> still the pineapple with the jalapenos on a pizza. It slaps. I know. Not everyone can hot roll with it, but oh man, I love me some pineapple on pizza. <laughs> savory yet sweet just like this game will be as we now are going in the last 10 seconds of our first matchup of the day between team dino nuggies and uncle and the nephews uh yeah seymour slabs actually the one that got me into that pizza back when we were roommates and uh he already knows we both know what we're talking about uh you know more for the rest of us if no one else wants to eat it. But we are loading in to our game one of the day. Both teams look like they want to just explode on the rift. But maybe one has a little bit more drastic of a boom right now. 
So one th oh dang, I didn't have enough time to comment the skins, but you guys should notice there's some banger skins on here. I know people work really hard for those. Sometimes it's luck you get them. Sometimes people spin the bag to get them. Uh, so I can't. I don't want to forget to mention some of those skins as we pull up in these games over the season. There's some good ones. Definitely not Udir in here. I think we had Dark Star Jin, pretty cool. That's a Hextex Swain, I believe. Oh. Yes, it is the Hextex um, Swain. Ten gemstones to get that skin if you don't roll it in a box. Not even. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do it. We'll do we'll do special events where Cole and I'll just go out and we'll uh, we'll cast people's promos and things like that. That would be fun. <laughs> Make sure that everyone's hyped and good to go so that even if you're behind, hey, we'll just tell the chat it's a banger inbound. As we do see an engage coming up, they will be spotted out on this ward. I like the early aggression coming out here, but uh, will be interesting to see if they the Udir tries to move in to answer around the Team Dino Nuggies blue as it looks like they'll just kind of be fishing around the area make sure none's going on as we actually do see a game. flank coming over here Rakan going in with the W that's already the Swain ignited Swain taken down by oh. Simmer for their early first blood Mocha Mexican caught on the wrong side of the map the Mantra Q will slow and that's another kill going over to GDI Yokimoto hanging back he wants to get out of this does miss the boomerang catch he might have to flash out of here and will be able to walk out but that is a quick two first kills going over to the side of the <laughs> uncle and the nephew going to the Udir and the Sivir. My goodness, my goodness. Not the start you wanted if you're Dino Nuggies, but hey. Let's get in there. Let's try to get back. 2 well start. Oh, you hate to see it. Yeah, and just looking at what's already transpired, going onto the jungle, going onto the carry, it's 400 gold lead in the jungle, and 400 gold lead in the bot lane to start your game off, and this Sivir Rakan... Uh, they with the ignite down, the Swain will definitely be able to look to get a little bit more trading, as uh, we actually get some trading of our own in the top side. Great pull coming on here, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, Cole. There, that happens two more times. Champagne's just dead, even yeah, with those kills. Dead. Yeah, definitely. That's a it's a really good combination. The bot lane is the Jin Swain, double stuns, lots of power, lots of damage. I mean, just don't get caught, right? Exactly. Swain still having his ignite does mean that there's definite potential to kill in this bot lane. And one thing I will point to, uh, so used to seeing the fleet footwork gin. We do have the dark harvest gin, perhaps a lethality build coming out of space Jabberwocky today. We'll have to see how that goes. As GDI just does do dear things, clears, does skip the gromp. Interestingly enough, as we do see a gang Mocha Mexican coming in, does still have the slow lands and slow on the bug pudding, but the chain will land. The hyper proc is not enough on the NAR to keep them chasing down for that kill. Uh, no sums burn just means that bug pudding, uh, you know, takes the worst end of that trade and get, gets back to farming. Just barely. Bug pudding escapes there with about 150 HP. Has to dive under his own tower to, to safety, but uh, like you said, no sums burn, so we'll take it. Or if we're on the side of Uncle and the Nephews. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Yokimoto does have a health lead here. Uh, does have a little CS lead, but with this wave crashing, Bug Pudding should be able to pick up most of these and even out, if not surpass Yokimoto in that gold. Is GDI just seen here stealing away the blue buff? Uh, might have been able to donate it over to Benjamin Zipper, but you know, this is this is a jungle meta. These are my buffs. There you go. <laughs> yeah, early still there. Our second rotation on the blue for Mocha Mexican as he's now clearing the grump. Things have definitely calmed down after our uh, opening two kill, double kill we saw there, but uh, looks like both teams are settling in now. And uh, the side of Dino Nuggie is going to have to try to figure a way to uh, chip into this gold lead, which has already ballooned to about 1,200. Yeah, and just even with the gold lead, looking at this bot lane, we're, we're having CS discrepancy build up as Mocha might look to make a play here. Does have the flank. See what they do on the Swainy. Swainy goes wide, but Mocha commits to the play. Will be knocked up by the Rakan. He still goes in on Champagne Shower. Will he be stunned up? Spell Shield is down, and that's a pickup going over to the side of Spade. Jabberwocky, while he is rooted up again, and that's another kill going over to Mocha Mexican. While it looked down and out, they get pick up two quick kills to bring us within 200 gold.
Great play my by Dino goodness. Dice. My goodness, what a play there. Well executed. We take the Sivir first. Then on the back end, we get another stun up onto the Rakan on the math teacher. Well done. Oh, That's man. Good. GDI does force the flash out of Yokimoto here. We'll keep running up to him. I don't think he can kill. Wave coming in. Uh, really, really just a power move. Just flexing on one of these solo laners. Maybe he'll have that in mind the next time he looks to push out against Bug that Pudding. With that information, though, we have we're giving away to Mocha Mexican and the others on Dino Nuggies the first Drake. So that Infernal, chilling in there. Even with the uh, Scuttle Vision to the side of Uncle and Nephews, that's no problem. We see Uter top side. That's our dragon. Yeah, Vinarveld making some great trades here. GDI just having to step in. Benjamin Zipper out of mana. Imagine if he had a blue buff. Does need his help to help pass or push this wave up so that way he's able to farm. Vinarveld doing pretty well for himself but cole with that first dragon being the infernal that does mean that there won't be an infernal soul this game still to be determined what soul we have but with what options we have available you know at this point you're just trying to avoid a possible mountain or for a possible sure. think, cloud my apologies yeah i think uh, mountain drake is probably the most valuable for either team in this case we talked about the lack of front line so on the one end for uncle and nephews it definitely helps them and then on the side of down on these, if they, they find themselves a mountain soul and get it, I mean, unkillable, unplayable. Yeah, that will be tough. No E from the Swain there. Math teacher does a pretty good job there to hit the Swain with the plume. Does mean they'll be able to heal back up, stay healthy in this bottling. Quite a bit of uh, sustain coming out. Sivir able to maintain mana with that spell shield. And Rakan just landing these plumes, getting the healing down, uh, actually staying deceptively healthy. Yeah, this game. Interestingly, teams are just kind of picking their picking their spots. You know, we had the two early kills in the five the five men, and then we had the great gank on the bot side by Marco Mexican. And, and other than that, chilling. Yeah, and this waiting is for our shots, waiting for items. And I really like this this type of play because I I feel like things aren't being forced. That while both teams understand the current game state, they're definitely playing it to the point to where it's not a solo lane difference it's not you know oh we misplayed this in the top is mocha mexican will be found out by gdi mocha mexican does not have level six misses a smite on the red buff benjamin zipper's already here that's a quick shock wave and mocha mexican goes down and that's a feels bad as a jungler right you're in your own jungle you think you're good to go all of a sudden you got udi on top of you with level six then you got the enemy orion on top of you as well blowing the shock wave to secure the kill you hate to see that, but uh, quick kill pickup takes the gold lead back to 1500 for the side of Uncle and the nephews. Yeah, and here comes GDI already flashing in, goes right on to UBU. UBU is just gone, goes back up, stuns up Space Jabberwocky. There's no way Math Teacher picks up the kill. A quick two kills on down in the bot side, and GDI is just taking over this game again on the Udir. Yeah, that was uh, well done. To go from enemy red buff all the way to bot lane straight away um, and get that, you know, help those two kills go as well as solid jungle play from GDI. Yeah. 5 2 stands to count. Yeah, this is looking big as Mocha Mexican is moving in on this gank. The tether will come down on the cane, means he won't be able to dive under the tower. Alakazam King, thank you so much for that four month resub, brother. Mad appreciate you, my man. Hope you're having a great Sunday. At least a better Sunday than Dino Nuggies is having to start out this game because it's the the gold lead's already grown back up to 2.7k. And Vinarville. Yeah, just like that. We're making comments on how it's laid back. Teams are picking their spots, and then we just get the three kill spike there for Uncle and the Nephews. Nice work. Looks like the next objective is gonna be the Rift Road. We'll see if either team opts to make a play for that. Um in this situation. I think accelerating the game definitely benefits Uncle and the Nephews. So they're also down that first Drake. That's just spawning here in about a minute as well. See kind of where resources are being spent. Looks like they're moving down towards that bottom side river, looking for clear some vision, get some vision. We have both, we have the Jin and Swain now, UBU, making some plays to do the same. 
Yeah, and as you see, bot lane didn't even path through lane there. Actually went to path through the jungle to make sure that Mocha Mexican's able to come in here and get one of these buffs. GDI was looking to move in and steal this, and while they do have knowledge that he is taking this, uh, they already had to expend quite a bit. Sivir Rakan get the free push right up to towers. Yokimoto will be tethered up, still a ways off from the Mega. We'll just back off, and this this Karma's already gotten past the hardest part of the lane for it. Uh, just played really safe, and while plays they did try to make plays in the top side, did really well in handling that pressure, and this Karma's just going to be really, really annoying and just hard overall to take down. We're going to see the fight of the game here shortly, as both top laners do have their um, teleports available. The second Drake is that mountain, so we will not have that mountain soul either. Um, leaves us two options, which I'm not going to try to quickly recount, but uh, I think we're going to have that big 5v5 coming up here momentarily. Right, and just uh, going in on this, so uh, with the Mountain Dragon being the next dragon, takes away uh, one of the win conditions for really both of these teams, but that does mean that the soul will either be an ocean or it will be a cloud wow. soul. And That's awesome for it. Yeah, and for the side of Uncle and the Nephews, you best believe that they are hoping to not get the Cloud Drake spawned. Okay, so we didn't get that fight. I was hoping we'd see on that objective. In fact, we just traded. Uncle right. and Nephews, Ocean, okay, it is. Uh, looks like Uncle and Nephews took the Drake, and now we got Mocha Mexican up here doing some work to uh, secure the Rift Herald. And GDI just looking for an overstep here, perhaps able to follow up on that, but you can tell this bot lane, they're so worried about GDI being down here, already down 23 gold. GDI is still here, and they're just gonna go right on UBU, pops the ulti to try to have the sustain to stay alive, pops the soul inferno, but it's not enough. UBU goes down, and this Swain pick is just getting punished in a matchup that I thought that they would be able to find success in. Yeah, the plays here from GDI are just really taking over now at 303, 350 gold shutdown. And, you know, all those worries about not having a good front line are being totally thwarted by his play. You know, he's just really far ahead. He is the front line. So, um, great job. Yeah, and this is really, I mean, we've seen his Udir in game one, and now in game two, you have to start to wonder. The Udir needs to become a ban because it looks like teams don't have an answer to just this clear minions really fast and run around and just gank. As first tower does go down, that all goes into the pockets of Sivir. Sivir is in a massive lead. 32 CS up, has a 1,700 gold lead over the Jin right now. That is a whole item. That is a whole half an item, excuse me over the enemy adc and once we move into these team fights it is going to be so hard for the side of dino nuggies to fight these because with the ricochet and with the boomerang Sivir is going to be hitting all of the members of the dino nuggies definitely definitely yeah that's a really early tower sub 13 minutes even no rift herald required i mean that's just uh yeah yeah that's gonna be tough to come back from we'll see what dino nuggies can do once we see uh, some of these team fights coming up here. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at some of the items being done. Uh, excuse me, it's GDI making a move for the top lane. Yogi Moto with the fancy feet, but you can't dodge the charm. The tether comes through for the karma. He's surviving for so long, but the three-man dive does prove to be successful as Yogi Moto goes down. Nice play. That was, I mean, they stuck with it after the flash, after the tether. I mean... Takes some takes some nuts to do that, and they, they execute perfectly. As uh, we saw there, GDI taking most of the tower aggro, uh, securing the kill goes over to Bug Pudding. Nicely done. Yeah, and that was just really well done from the side of Yokimoto. Really unfortunate for him there. Did about everything he could to live, if only he had Mega. But good job on them to be watching for that Narbar. Don't want to take a dive against the Mega Nar. Just so easy to turn. Would have been able to in that position for sure. Already almost lived on the Mini Nar. Yeah, I think as I'm looking at this, you know, how, how do I turn the game around if I'm Dino Nuggies, right? I'm right. looking at a Baron fight. I'm looking at a Dragon fight. I'm looking at a multiple man stun on the Nar. Uh, looking for Kinnon all to follow that up. Looking for Swain in there as well. Like, 
We just gotta press R at the same time and hope for the best. It's, it's exactly. Gonna come back, but we'll see if uncle and nephews give them that fight. I mean, they're in complete control. They don't have to necessarily do that anytime soon. About six minutes, five and a half minutes till the Baron will spawn for the first time. Got our next straight coming up here in just over two minutes, I'd say. Uh, work on this cloud, so we'll see. We got one one is the Drake count, seven to two, and then the gold lead now has ballooned to about six k for the side of Uncle. Oh man, and Matt Teeter just flashes on him. Yokimoto tries to run away. Otto's already in the air as GDI yeah. finds UBU sleeping out here. UBU has to drop the ultimate. Does want to stay on GDI, oh, but will no. go down. Mocha Mexican tries to go in on Champagne Shower. The Spell Shield will take it up. Does burn the flash. Does he have the W? Will just smite him away. And that's a shutdown going over to the cane. Huge. Huge. Nice play by Mocha Mexican there. Taking the following up on the 1v2. Yeah, that will mean Rift Herald drop topside. Try to get this. Might try to find Math Teacher here. Should be able to dash to safety as he does. Slowed down, but Moco Mexican just wants to get this to crash. No plates up anymore it means that this is just a we're just getting damage off on this tower. Uh, you know, had that Rift Herald in his pocket for quite some time, just did not find a chance as Uncle and the Nephews are just applying pressure all over the map. So, no chance to use that means the Rift Herald isn't gonna be much net value, but little under half out there a huge shockwave lands on the ubu the action is never ending oh, bitterville boy. drops down the ultimate and tries to run away will be slowed up by the distance from the oriana but able to move to safety this udir oh, is insane this oriana is even crazier and that means free dragon yeah i thought initially oriana was just teleporting back for tempo just to catch the wave but uh it looks like Benjamin Zipper had other plans. Nice shockwave there. Looked like it almost went on the two. Ends up just catching the Swain. Easy kill. Easy Drake. Yeah, and um, without any frontline Colt, uh, you know, I take a 21, 21 and a half minute Ocean Soul over a frontline any day. If that's if that's my yeah. team and you told me I only got a deer, but I got Ocean Soul pre yeah. pre twenty two minutes, I'd take that yeah. all day. All day. Yeah, the game looked really even right after that double kill bot lane by uh, Loco Mexican. Uh, but then from there, we just saw the Uder, as you say, completely taken over. And I, I would imagine he's going to be a ban uh, for future reference, if anyone's paying attention to that. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, at this point, King, these guys are walking in the park. They're walking in their park, and Yokimoto going to have to jump over the wall, but here comes GDI, denied the blast gun, but gets a great knock into the wall with the Nar ultimate. The curtain call will be brought down by the Jin, and a beautiful shockwave stops UBU from even being able to go in. Here comes the Mantra Q, and GDI says, Yokimoto, your days are numbered. Vin Arvel does look to go in while on the backside, the math teacher is causing as much chaos as he can. Champagne shower in the back, 3v1, oh, taking no. people down as an absolute slaughter as they keep going after them the chain will come to from the karma gdi running after tower will not dive in him tower to secure the ace for his team but that does mean oh man that does Four mean zero. <laughs> sensational sensational re-engage there i mean you saw the nar pop off with the alt great play by yakimoto unfortunately I think Benjamin Zipper was just waiting on the cooldown of that shockwave and you saw them just turn and burn. Four for zero. They moving in here on the in hit tower. Great play. Yeah, and my apologies. Uh, the first dragon did go over to the side of Dino Nuggy, so I misspoke in my 21 and a half minute dragon soul. That was their second dragon. Uh, something that they could have let up. It makes sense now. Excuse my mouth. <laughs> Don't sit it. <laughs> Reading, reading the chat. I, I just had a need to say mouth. I don't know where it came from. Yeah, these these shockwaves have been absolutely insane. Coming out of the side of Benjamin Zipper, and you know Mocha Mexican just trying to get what farming can. But after all of these fights, just taking a look at some of the gold, Cole. We have you know 800 gold lead in the top side. As Uncle and the nephews will start off this Rift Herald should get this for free. No reason that Dino Nuggies would look to contest this, but a 2000 gold lead in the jungle position. 2000 gold lead in your mid lane. 3400 gold lead from the marksman. Even the mm -hmm. support has a 1.800 gold lead over the enemy support. At this point, these are items that they have yeah. over the side of Dino Nuggies. Big time items. As we see, you know, the uh, 
Dead Man's Plate already coming in on the on the Udu there. He's also got the Winged Moon Plate on top of a Frostfire Gauntlet on top of his, you know, CDR boots. It's just, he's just a lot to deal with uh, compared to the Kane, right? Only with the Plated Steel Caps and the Gore Drinker. Gonna be tough for him to keep up and, and fight toe to toe, you know? That whole discussion about, oh, frontline this, frontline that. I mean, if I have a Dead Man's Plate to you're not Dead Man's Plate, it is what it is, man. Doesn't oh. matter what champions you got, I'm just stronger than you. Absolutely, and a point to note on here, Cole. This cane has not yet transformed. This is still base form cane in a 20 minute game. This is the worst turn of events you could have drafting this champion. So we talked about that feast or famine, right? One of us mentioned that during the draft stage, and like, here we go with some of the famine that we're, we're witnessing. Unfortunately for Mocha Mexico. Yeah, just unable to really get in these fights. That's why uh, it makes more sense going in. Perhaps with a lot of these champions being ranged, sitting on blue form, but waiting to have red form come up as Do or <laughs> Uncle and the Nephews are just going to start off this Baron at 20 and a half minutes. This is the window. They need to get at least four or five bodies here ASAP, but I don't think they have the information. Oh, excuse do me, so. does have his Ross transformation, but that is going to be a shockwave. That is also jungler on the other side of the map. Uh, Vin Arvel uses the flash just to force the karma back, but that does mean the Baron will go over. Yeah, you got the Orianna shutdown. Congratulations for your 850 gold. You just gave them 1,500 gold and enough power to end this game. I mean, oh my god, crazy. has Yokimoto just gone over the Rakan? We'll charm everybody up. Yokimoto's gonna have to run away. Ben Arvel, remember he used that ulti for the Karma in the single lane. Is it enough? The math teacher with the W to pick it up. Here comes the curtain call and the gin will be opened up on. I don't know that he wants to actually take this. The Rift Herald will drop. They still had that right before they picked up the Baron buff as Mocha Mexican will try to fall back. This must mean that this tier two mid tower will go down. UBU doing what they can against the Sivir, but this Sivir is too massive. It has a karma behind him. Mocha Mexican trying to get over the wall and oh my God, here comes the cavalry GDI and Matt teacher right over over and this rift herald still charging yeah too much power fancy footwork there by math teacher as well landing the flash into the ton into the w back onto a teammate is just great plays all around for uncle and nephews as they clean up take out the mid inhibitor we already got gdi down here working on this ocean third ocean drake there for the squad they'll reset get some more items and look to push to end yeah, this is looking all but over from the side of Dino Nuggies. Been starved out of their jungle. Now this gold lean has not stopped growing. And yeah, you could say it came really from that Baron buff, but it also came from Uncle and the Nevs not taking a chance and slowing this game down. They have just absolutely dominated from start to finish these objectives, only losing one Dragon, only losing one Rift Herald. The rest of the game has been all unks. Definitely, and also when they were those objectives that they lost, they were able to trade effectively elsewhere on the map, right? So you always saw GDI active somewhere. If he wasn't getting the Drake, he was ganking in a lane while that was happening or, or what have you. So um, really well executed on the side of Uncle and Nephews, understanding their win con, understanding they want this game to end around 25, 28 minutes um, before we can get too many items on the side of Dino Nuggies, and it looks like that's what they're going to try to do. And Gus, but to your point, they are able to take down that Siege minion worth the third value of the kill. So, I mean, you have to imagine it's at least worth the time and effort they put into that. A dub on the table for Dino Nuggies, even if it only comes in taking down a super minion. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm thinking here... Oh, Yokimoto might be caught out here. Does have the Mega about to go up. Will not be able to get Bug Pudding. Is able to ult GDI into the wall, but this is not the target that they want to be going on. Look at how tanky this guy is. You just burned everything on your Gnar, including his health. As the Rakan just goes in, charms up Vinarvel. Vinarvel will go into the stasis, but is not able to get the ultimate down beforehand. Means he dies. Big team fight ulting missing for this tower defense. As Uncle and the Nefs look to have this be the winning siege. Benjamin Zipper, not even there for his team just says hey you guys got this i'm gonna push in this solo lane let these guys feel the burn again the counter engage just 
Hey, nice try. Oh, the Let's go! Big shockwave coming out of Benjamin Zipper for the quadra kill. Dude, Absolutely safety. destroyed. They thought they had him caught pretty. out, and they just deleted off the map. That was pretty. <laughs> oh that man, that was pretty. <laughs> it was so dirty. They had to just end the game. Someone left a little early. I don't blame them. That was absolute slaughter at the end of that game from the side of Uncle and the Nephews. What a great wow. game. And they start 2-0 in week one of the ULS. Quad, though. Wow. Yeah, what a, what a play. Nice way to end it there. I mean, it, I think the game was... Uh... Unfortunately, you know, after kind of some early theatrics and some back and forth, we had a two and two start. It was looking pretty good. I think uh, Dino Nuggies had a, a solid shot. You know, they had the first Drake. They had their win kind of just being the tankier team, the better 5v5. But uh, in the end, GDI dropping a 6-0 and 12 stat line. 18 KP no deaths is, is out of control, right? And then Bug Pudding as well, never really feeling too much pressure uh, in the top lane, getting the, getting the items that he needed. Uh, he or she needed to, to do things that they needed to do. And then Benjamin Zipper, obviously, just pulling it off at the end with the exclamation point, the quadra kill, the four-man shockwave, one shot was, was awesome. So, GG. Yeah, just really amazing play coming out from them. A really dominant week one showing out of Uncle and the Nephews. Uh, gosh, I'm just really speechless. I felt like that game was so close to start things out we saw slow it slowed down after that early gameplay where uncle the nest were able to get those two kills and then uh dino nuggies were able to answer back in that bot lane find a response of their own and yep. looked uh very very reminiscent of like games we saw yesterday to where we saw uh uncle and the nephews do the same thing get out to that early lead made the the play got made on the bot side yesterday by Artie and they were able to find the kill but this team has just an incredible mental just bouncing right back from this the gold lead in both games is brought down to under 300 gold back to an even game state but then still exploding on the rift not saying hey we got to take things slower we know our win comp we're going to go out we're going to do what we need to do to make sure we secure this victory and they just did an amazing job at that yeah definitely i mean you saw some early pressure uh, from the side of Mocha Mexican on, on the bug pudding and champagne shower math teacher just hanging bot side getting as much value as they wanted right that tower going down I think at like 1240 is insane we had no rift trail for, for that side uh, at that point in the game as a matter of fact Mocha Mexican secured it a couple minutes thereafter so, or maybe before but like that's just a ton of gold to your point Z um, there's just too much damage it didn't matter the, the the team comps or any of that nonsense they were just way too strong way too early they closed it out per perfectly.